In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us put ourselves in the presence of the Lord. Lord, graciously give us your Holy Spirit. Guide us from within. Give us your light, your discernment. Incline our heart toward yours. Kindle our heart with the fire of your Holy Spirit. And we ask you this through the powerful intercession of Our Lady who is always present among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, good evening, everybody, and uh, welcome back to this uh, course, uh, Reading and Studying St. John of the Cross. We are second book of the Ascent of Mount Carmel. We are about to start chapter 14, and it's video uh, 50. Without further ado, let me share with you the um, screen, a portion of my screen. Here you are. This is where we stopped last time. So let me just do this. Yes. So you remember, let me just go back here to this um, um, table. These are all the uh, communications, if you want, uh, graces, not, not graces, communications, anything that can fall, better said, anything that can fall in the mind um, is included in this table either natural or su supernatural. Of course, we are with the sup supernatural. In the supernatural, it's corporeal or spiritual. We finished corporeal. Now we are starting with uh, spiritual. Uh, we saw, I think, one kind, which is the visions. Now we will be soon seeing revelations, locutions, and so forth. So um, we are then here. Uh, it's distinct. It's special. We could see it. It falls. You can you can you can see something, and of course it is uh, spiritual. So let us then continue where we left it. So here, this chapter fourteen, which treats of two kinds of spiritual vision. Remember, vision uh, includes the five categories here. He calls the five which include vision. The five of them he prefers. We saw that the other day. Uh, to name them, to call them visions. Just bear with him. Uh, so visions, revelation, locution, spiritual feeling are visions uh, for him. But of course, there are uh, five different categories. So we are today uh, seeing uh, the spiritual vision that comes supernaturally. The vision, the first one, not the second one, the first one. Okay. So speaking now strictly of those visions, which are spiritual. So it's not visions in the... Uh, uh, wide sense of the word, as I just said, but it's the first category, as you can see it here in the table, which is also namely visions, okay? So amongst the five visions, he takes the first one, which is called visions. They come supernaturally. Speaking now strictly of those visions which are spiritual and are received without the intervention of any bodily sense, which means... There's no intervention of uh, uh, our perception. It, it is given directly uh, um, to our mind. I said that there are two kinds of vision that can be received in the mind. The one kind is of corporeal substances, which means you can figure it out. You can see it. You can imagine it because you have seen it before and so forth. The other is incorporeal or separated substance. Okay. Uh, translation is correct. Subst substantias separadas or incorporeas. Now, the first category, the corporeal visions. 
He will explain. Have respect to all material things that are in heaven or and on earth. Of course, you wonder why is he saying material things in heaven? Okay. Are there any quote unquote material things in heaven? Okay. So, which the soul is able to see even while, so it's not with the sense, even though it's corporeal, it's not using the sense, the visual, uh, the sense, the vision of the body. No, it is the soul that can see now. Okay. So the soul is able to see even while it is still in the body by the aid of certain supernatural illumination. So uh, there is a, a supernatural light given to the, to the mind, which allow then uh, to see. But this light is derived from God. That's interesting here. You see? So you have the God's light, if you want. His nature is light. And derived from him, there is a supernatural illumination that can come to us. Wherein it is stable to see all uh, things that are not present. Hmm? It is able, sorry, not stable. It is able to see all things that are not present, both in heaven and on earth, even as St. John saw in the book of Revelation, which we are reading these days, as we read in the 21st chapter of the Apocalypse, which is the book of Revelation, where he describes um, uh, the church, um, heaven, heaven is open, they can see the church and so forth where he describes and relates the excellence of celestial uh, Jerusalem, which he saw in heaven. Even so, again, we read of St. Benedict. We, it is known, um, it's in the life of uh, St. Benedict, written by St. Uh, Gregory the Great, Pope, uh, who celebrated him a few days ago, I think, um, uh, derived from, uh, sorry, um, St. Benedict is, is mentioned by um, uh, Pope Gregory the, the Great, as having had um, um, a vision uh, where he saw the whole world. It's, but it's a spiritual vision, of course. It is not a physical vision. It's not like you are flying uh, over the Earth, uh, planet Earth, and you can see uh, the entire planet. No. Uh, or the universe, I don't know, with, with which uh, 360 degrees eye. No. So it's a spiritual vision. This vision, says St. Thomas, here it's St. Thomas Aquinas, in uh, the first of his uh, Gordlibets, uh, was in the light that is derived from above, as we have said. It's the light derived from above, as we, uh, as we have said. It is very rare to see uh, St. John of the Cross um, quoting other authors rather than the scriptures. And here in this text, St. John, uh, John of the Cross is quoting uh, uh, St. Thomas Aquinas, is quoting Gregory the Great, who wrote the life of St. Uh, Benedict. So it's very interesting here. Uh, it's just a little parenthesis. Uh, first, it's very rare uh, to find him quoting certain authors, uh, very few. It is um, usually the scriptures whom he quotes, but it's interesting here, since he's talking about certain uh, things, that he's quoting them, he's, qu he's talking about heaven, he's talking about what is happening in heaven, and also about this vision, and um, it happens that some St. Thomas Aquinas was studied uh, this vision, and uh, this vision, and he's mentioning it. So you see, uh, there is no, how can I put it, St. John of the Cross doesn't place himself on a separate pedestal in the church or a special different uh, room from the others. He is part of the living tradition and he doesn't hesitate when it's needed to mention, to quote uh, this or that uh, saint or doctor, essentially doctor uh, of, of the church. Okay, so just for you to uh, be aware of that, that he is not separated from the rest. He does quote, and it shows also his culture, what he read, what he's reading, um, people in whom he trusts, of course, St. Thomas Aquinas, without any doubt. He studied 
some of the questions when he was studying in Salamanca, but also Pope Gregory the Great, who is very known to uh, talk about contemplation. And it is traditionally said, but we don't have any text or document uh, from his hand. Um, it is said that during his studies, uh, theological studies, he did uh, study a lot contemplation and apparently he wrote something on contemplation. And St. Gregory the Great, especially in his homilies on Ezekiel and other, uh, and other works also, uh, does talk about contemplation, hence the mention of Gregory the Great, but essentially it's uh, Dionysus the pseudo Areopagite, who is uh, often, um, who, would, who will be more quoted, I wouldn't say often because he rarely mentions uh, authors, but the one who is most um, quoted is rather Dionysius. Uh, remember that Dionysius the pseudo Areopagite, this mysterious author, today we believe that he is uh, from in the fifth uh, century. Uh, remember that he was considered uh, during the Middle Ages uh, as being the disciple of St. Paul, whom he finds um, when he preaches to the uh, um, Athenians. Um, he's mentioned in the Act of the Apostles. Uh, they believed in the Middle Age that it was the same person. And therefore, all his writings had immense authority. And I'm mentioning Dionysius because Dionysius wrote a very short book. I did mention that in the beginning of this course um, called uh, The Mystical Theology. It is a very short work. We have it on the, um, uh, on the website of the School of Mary. If you go to articles and scroll down and choose uh, on contemplation, there are articles on contemplation, then you can find uh, this uh, beautiful uh, work of uh, uh, Dionysus. Uh, he quotes him, of course, uh, more than uh, anybody else, but in general, it's lit. So let us go back to uh, St. John of the Cross. So here he quotes St. Thomas Aquinas, as you can see, and he quotes St. Gregory the Great, uh, in the life of St. Benedict. And here our translator does mention that uh, Dialogues, which is the work of uh, St. Gregory on the life of uh, St. Gregory of St. Benedict. Um, and this is St. Gregory uh, the Great. Okay, now. The other visions, so this is the first category of visions, the corporeal visions, and the other one, which are incorporeal substances. Like they don't have uh, any sort of physicality, if you want, uh, or maybe it has physicality, but that physicality that we don't know at all, hmm. cannot be seen by the aid of this derived illumination. <clears throat> Whereof we are here speaking, but only by another and a higher illumination, which is called the illumination of glory, technical expression used in theology, scholastic theology, lumen gloria. Lumen gloria is the light in which we can see uh, God without this lumen gloria. And this is rather Thomas Aquinas, but you can find it. <clears throat> uh, without this light, we cannot see uh, uh, God. We cannot see other creatures and so forth. This is the light. Um, that we have in, in, in the glory. Um, I don't want to enter now into details. Is it rather in the spirit or the, in the soul? I mean, of course, inclined to say it's the, in the soul. Okay, so it's not very essence, but it's a, a light that is given that sort of pervades uh, heaven. Now, so it, it's a technical expression, Lumen Gloria, and uh, you will see it um, occurring a bit uh, below. And thus, these visions of incorporeal substances, such as angels, angels don't have bodies. Uh, souls, a soul doesn't have a body because it abandoned, it left the body. You no, know, when we die, mm -hmm. uh, waiting for the final resurrection, it's only the soul and the spirit which, uh, who, who go to see God. Uh, but the soul, on this, the soul and the spirit, or the spirit is part of the soul, uh, doesn't have a f physicality like the, the, the body, okay? So angels and souls uh, are not of this life. Sub substances 
which are, which are not of this life, neither can they be seen in the mortal uh, body. By definition, I can't see an angel. Uh, if I see an angel, it's a representation of an angel, but it's never the angel itself. All the representations of angels that we have are representations. But by definition, an angel is a spirit, and a spirit, you can't see the spirit. And this applies to the good angels, but also uh, to the bad angels. So they can use a materialization, but it's not, they are not material. And the same for uh, people who died, of course, except the Lord himself, who is with, with his body, Our Lady with, with her body, and maybe uh, Elijah, Prophet Elijah, and um, uh, one or two more uh, uh, prophets. For if God were pleased to communicate them to the soul, in a sense as they are, the soul would at once go forth from the flesh and would be loose from this mortal life. So, if God communicates in a sense as they are, these incorporeal substances, this communication is so powerful that the person would die. But wait, we will see that he can give something for some exceptionally for some people, but usually it is too powerful to be um, uh, for us to bear it. For this reason, God says to Moses, when he entreated him to show him his essence, man shall not see me and be able to remain alive. Of course, it's about God here, but it can be also derived. Uh, it can be about uh, creatures like angels, uh, saints, and so forth. Wherefore, when the children of Israel thought that they were to see God or had seen him or some angel, they feared death. As we read in the book of Exodus and Deuteronomy also, 18, uh, where fearing these things, they said, let not God communicate himself to us openly, lest we die. You see, so if God communicates himself in with these incorporate, um, uh, incorporeal sorry, substances, we can't bear that it's too strong. You see, <clears throat> so the risk is death because of the intensity of the communication. It can break the uh, nexus, the, the, the connection, the, 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 the knot between the body and uh, the soul. And likewise, in the book of Judges, Manuel, father of Samson, uh, uh, thought that he and his wife had seen, in a sense, the angel who spake uh, with them and who had appeared to them in the form of a most beautiful man. And he said to his wife, <clears throat> we shall die because we have seen the Lord. And thus these visions occur not in this life, save occasionally and fleetingly occasionally and fleetingly why fleetingly because it's too strong a person can die if god continues a little bit more the person can die and saint Therese of the child jesus talks about the grace she received she said the intensity was that great that if it had lasted a little bit more i would have died you see and other saints also do mention that so <clears throat> it's just a matter of intensity because it's as if God is like uh, communicating himself and becomes almost like a, a, an extremely powerful magnet that attracts the soul and then can separate totally the soul from the body. That's the uh, risk, uh, quote unquote, uh, of such communication. Uh, you will say to me, well, why not? Or why shouldn't we <laughs> have these communications there and die out of, of, of them? Well, if we still are not ready to die, it's better not. Okay, uh, by the way, St. John of the Cross describes the, the uh, Christian death. I have mentioned that many times, and I will uh, just give you again uh, the, the, the quote. It's in the Living Flame. Um, <clears throat> it's in the Living Flame, the last big uh, work of uh, St. John of the Cross, and you find it in <clears throat> stanza... Um, the first stanza, tear, tear, tear through the veil of this sweet encounter. It's in 
stanza one. This is the uh, this 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 uh, collected works. You find it in page six three nine. Uh, the first stanza here is, um, sorry, this is just just a prologue. But then the stanza itself starts the following page the pages page uh, six four one. And when he explains, then tear through the veil of this sweet encounter, he describes the proper Christian death, which is a death um, um, caused by a powerful uh, act from the Holy Spirit, more powerful than the usual ones, which then will uh, uh, make the, 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 the soul and the spirit on one side uh, be separated from the body. So apparently the person will be dying out of natural causes, but in fact the person the true cause of the death is just a, a much stronger act uh, of, of love. Okay, so if you want it, you can find it in, um, I'm trying to find uh, the, um, sorry, I, I, I was trying to find the, the verse itself. Um, I don't see it. Anyway, it doesn't matter. You will find it. Um, yeah, it's here. Uh, end of uh, paragraph 31. Uh, he starts here uh, to um, comment the uh, the text. Uh, tear, the, uh, tear through the veil of this sweet encounter. And he explains why do we call it veil and so forth. Okay. So remember that. And it's it's very much in connection uh, with what we are saying, uh, as you can see, it's it's the same work of the grace of God. Some people think that yes, an advanced stage or a different stage and so forth, the grace is working. Uh, um, these are completely different things. No, it's just a matter of intensity of the action of the grace of God and the act of the grace of God uh, when it um, uh, enters in contact with the human being. It does the first needed thing, and if it's purification, well, purification it, it is. Um, and then, uh, if the purification is achieved, well, the the next work, the fire of God, the, the Holy Spirit, the grace of God will do is just to to uh, illumine and then unite uh, and so forth. Okay. So let us continue. Of course, if you have questions, don't hesitate to uh, ask them. I know we want to progress, but still, um, it's sometimes it's um, useful. So where were we? Um, so it's just to show you the, the, the coherence between his teaching. Uh, here we are in, in uh, uh, Santa Mont Carmel, and the living flame is toward the end of his life. Um, the last work he's revising is just a few weeks before he dies is the living flame of love. So um, there is, it's extremely coherent. Uh, the um, Ascent of Mount Carmel is also one of the, one of the first works um, he's writing, the major works is, is probably the first one. Okay. Yeah, so this is what I was here. Occur not in this life, save occasionally and fleetingly, when making an exception to the conditions which govern our natural life. The conditions which govern our natural life is the union between the soul uh, and, uh, and the body. These are, this is a natural condition. Uh, and then sometimes it's an exception. He communicates this powerful, but he needs to be careful because otherwise he can kill the person. Mm? God so allows it. At such times, he totally withdraws the spirit from this life. Hmm? In such times, when he communicates his powerful grace, what happens? It's like he's absorbing the spirit in him. And therefore, the spirit and the soul are almost like taken out of the body itself. And the natural functions of the body are supplied by his favor. Hmm? When Teresa of Avila comes back from the all sorts of uh, uh, raptors or ecstasy or, or, or other um, uh, graces like, like this one. Um, she says, yeah, the body is aching because it, she's like uh, cold, cold and aching. Why? It's like she abandoned her, her body. Uh, it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be, uh, I mean, uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't have to be the case of uh, 
uh, uh, our journey to, to holiness doesn't include that necessarily, but the sense of it, yes, but a powerful one, not necessary. This is why at the time when it is thought that St. Paul saw these, um, namely the incorporeal substances in the third heaven, this is John of the Cross who is adding this bit, that saint says, um, what does he say? Um, that is, he was raptured, and of uh, that which he saw, he says that he knows not if it was in the body or out of the body, but God knows. This is this is a quote from St. Paul, uh, um, second uh, letter to Corinthians, chapter 12, verse 2. Uh, by the way, this grace is commented by many other authors. Uh, think of Thomas Aquinas, uh, for, for instance. He, he, he does comment it. You, you, you will probably, I think you find it uh, more than in one place in, in uh, the Summa Theologica and other, and other works. Herein, it is clearly seen that the limits of natural means of communication were passed. It's too strong. Was he out of his body? Was he in his body? He doesn't know. So you see, normally we stay in the body where we don't go out of the body. You see, this is the limitations, the, the limits that God puts to our nature. And that this was the work of God. Likewise, it is believed that God showed his essence to Moses. Translation is correct. Essentia. For we read that God said to him that he would set him in the cleft of the rock. Because Moses said, show me, show me yourself. Hmm? So God said, well, you can't, that's, that's difficult. But then, okay, he put him in the rock and protected him. You see, God put Moses in the rock inside of like a cavern or or, or, or or place in the rock, and then he protected him and would protect him by covering him with his right hand and protecting him so that he should not die when his glory passed. God said, okay, I will pass, but I will protect you because otherwise you can die. The which glory passed indeed and was shown to him fleetingly. And the natural life of Moses was protected by the right hand uh, of God. You find this in Exodus chapters 33, verse 22. But these visions that were, that were so substantial, tan substantiales, like that of St. Paul and Moses, and that of our father Elias, uh, prophet Elijah is considered to be uh, the... Uh, archetype of the Carmelite, if you want. And of course, um, he is always mentioned as our father, Elijah, or Saint Elijah, or Elias. When he covered his face at the gentle whisper of God, you remember, when, uh, whenever uh, he, uh, he heard this gentle breeze, he covered himself uh, the, uh, like this. Uh, so, St. John of the Cross reads it as a manifestation of God, and covering himself is to protect himself from the power of this grace, even though it's a gentle breeze. No? Uh, although there are pleating occur only very rarely, indeed hardly ever to very few. So hardly ever, very few. He still mentions them, but just to be able to be more exhausting. For God performs such a thing in those that are very strong in the spirit of the church and the law of God, as were well the three men named above. Very interesting here, uh, when you ask St. John of the Cross, very few, okay, but who amongst the very few? Uh, why and uh, how would you describe them? It's very interesting here to say, hmm, these are very strong in the spirit of the church. You remember the lesson we had earlier on, a uh, few, few, few lessons back when he talked about, um, I explained this, uh, the church and uh, being the, the extension of the incarnation and so forth. 
and you I, I I'm sure you you sensed how uh, how it how much it requires faith in the presence of God uh, in, in um, on earth still uh, the incarnation is still continuing um, and you see here he says something similar no he says very strong in the spirit of the church you see so uh, it's very important no some people want the holy spirit and pray for the holy spirit but they they want to find the holy spirit outside of the church the holy spirit if you want to find the abundance of the holy spirit uh, you, you will find the abundance inside of the church not outside of the church and the more you love the church jesus body the more you receive the holy spirit you see um some people uh tend to forget this or simply go astray, thinking that uh, one thing is loving Jesus and the Holy Spirit, and the other thing is the church. No, we can't. We can't uh, cut uh, uh, the uh, guillotine the the head of of, of the Lord. Uh, we can't say I love Jesus the head, but forget about the body. Uh, it's one Jesus. You see, very strong in the spirit of the church and the law of God as where the three men are named above. But although these visions of spiritual substances cannot be unveiled and be clearly seen in this life by the mind, sorry, I didn't change this one, by the mind, they can nevertheless be felt in the substance of the soul with the sweetest touches and unions, all of which belong to spiritual feelings correct translation, sentimientos, whereof with the div divine favor we shall treat presently. Of course, I hear your question, is this happening in the soul, in the conscious soul, or in the spirit? I am inclined at this junction, since union, since uh, even the engagement, the spiritual engagement hasn't ha occurred yet. The soul and the spirit are still rather together. While when you have the union, the spirit can be detached from the soul, so to speak, of course, and be totally united to God and allow a normal uh, uh, behavior, if you want a normal, um, yeah, a normal behavior uh, and not be under the uh, uh, influence of such powerful grace the union with god is even more powerful uh, to a certain extent than this or it's a constant uh, powerful communication of god but how come then the person can be still alive it's because before the end of purification the soul and the spirit you remember when i draw the spirit it's like a, a squashed a squashed um, potato forgive me the the, the, the image no uh, uh, squashed against the soul so it's my way to say the spirit and the soul are not yet separated the spirit is not formed totally formed yet so in this sense what occurs to the spirit can filter can go through easily uh, to the soul and i haven't i haven't mentioned that often but it is the case this is why when a person receives a powerful grace a person who is in this state which is still in purification when the person receives a very powerful grace uh, it is uh, the especially graces as he's describing imagine before purification which i doubt because this these are i think a little bit after purification but anyway we have discussed about that so th the grace is so strong as we described with trees of avila that not only the spirit is attracted by god but also the upper part of the uh, of the soul is taken so in this is why we he says it's like you take life from the body itself life which is then uh the, the spirit and the soul the upper part of the soul is is like absorbed in god so the body is is left alone you see but as you see both of them are attracted and to a certain extent uh, the soul is drinking something that falls from what what falls in the spirit you see of course he says the substance of the soul the substance of the soul you may easily say well that's the spirit um, okay but 
I think in this state, it's very difficult to have something separately in the spirit and not falling uh, in, in the soul, such, uh, uh, such graces, uh, this type of graces. We will face the same problem uh, uh, soon uh, in chapter 26. Um, very similar problem. Uh, is it in the soul? Is it in the spirit? Is it in both? Uh, it's slightly different, but in both, we will see that. So bear in mind this, okay? That uh, the, the, whatever occurs in the spirit, it is uh, possible, very possible, that it is reflected, echoed, uh, in the soul, because we are still in purification. Right? Otherwise, the spirit then is detached from the soul and then can receive the full communication of God, union, and the soul can function normally. Otherwise, life is impossible. Imagine a person who is united with God, like spiritual marriage. If what he describes then uh, uh, applies to this person, which means the spirit is still stuck to the soul, the, the person cannot function. The person will be constantly absorbed in God. Do you see what I'm trying to say, or do you need me to, to draw it? Do you see what I'm trying to explain, or do you need me to draw it? Okay, so... So yes, sweetest touches and unions, yes, it's it's possible to feel uh, certain things because if we talk about this, of course, we talk about something that is perceived. Otherwise, you wouldn't say that. You would say it's happening in the spirit. Forget about the rest. All of which belong to belongs to the spiritual feelings. Whereof, with the divine favor, we shall treat presently. For our pen is being directed now. He explains his main aim, and we know it. Uh, our pen, he's talking about himself, uh, his pen, is being directed and guided to these, that is to say, to the divine bond and union of the soul with the divine substance. Of course, he has take soul as the human being, not soul like soul different from the spirit. Like usually in, in, all, in all times, instead of saying of the, the person or the human being, they, they say the soul. We shall speak of this when we treat of the dark and confused mystical understanding. Understanding here, you see, <clears throat> knowledge, like knowledge, if you want. Mm? Uh, in Spanish is la inteligencia mística, if you confuse So understanding is la inteligencia, which means, uh, yes, it's, it's a, a knowledge. So the dark and confused mystical knowledge, which remains to be described wherein we shall show how by means of this dark and loving knowledge. You see, of course, when we talk about dark and loving knowledge, this, is, this falls in the, the spirit. It is dark for the conscious mind. And as you can see, loving knowledge, you cannot separate loving from knowledge. God communicates himself equally in as knowledge and as love. Because it is... Uh, a participation into the two operations of the Trinity. He doesn't mention it here, but he mentions it in the spiritual canticle. So God cannot give to the spirit, not to the mind, to the spirit. He cannot give more love than, um, than knowledge or more knowledge than love. In the soul, yes. But that's, that's uh, an effect, if you want. So the ray of love the uh, contemplation, if you want, which falls in the spirit, is constantly mentioned by St. John of the Cross as a loving knowledge. Hmm? Noticia amorosa. Noticia is knowledge. Amorosa, uh, loving. So why I'm saying this, why am I stopping here? Because often... When you hear people talking about contemplation or when we read certain texts about contemplation, you have the impression that it's all about something to be seen, as if it is only a light. No, God is a loving light. He's light and love. It's like fire. You have heat, you have light, and heat in the fire. It's the same. God is altogether light and heat. 
So you cannot talk about contemplation as if only it were a knowledge. That this is very grave to think that. And this is constant in all the writings of St. John of the Cross. And he often uses this expression, notitia amorosa, which means a knowledge. Of course, in English, we, we, we flip it. We say loving knowledge, but in Spanish, it's knowledge loving. Okay? I, I'm just putting it this way because uh, knowledge comes first. You know, the, the, the father begets the son first. There is no uh, moment, of course, where the father begets the son and then after he will then uh, love, they will love each other, with the Holy Spirit. It's, this is a, uh, it's only a logic distinction, but in God, the two operations occur simultaneously, you see? Because there is no moment where the Holy Spirit did, wasn't uh, there or wasn't loving, you see? It's, it's together. <clears throat> so by means of this dark and loving knowledge, God is united with the soul in a lofty and divine degree. Se junta... Dios con el alma en alto grado y divino. For after some manner, this dark and loving knowledge, again, noticia oscura amorosa, which is faith. Ah, you see here, it, it's, it's unbelievable. The, the, suddenly, you see the synonyms. The synonyms are popping, popping up. You see, to say loving knowledge, which is noticia amorosa, to talk about it as being dark for the conscious mind, or to say faith, and later on you will see hope and love will appear in, 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 uh, in the, within a few paragraphs or, or chapters. You will see. Yeah? It's the same. So you understand that the, 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 um, what St. John of the Cross understands, what he puts under the, the word faith is extremely rich and dense of a spiritual communication uh, of God to us. Faith is not, yeah, do you believe in God? Oh, yeah, maybe I believe. I sort of believe half, half, this, this, that, etc. Do you have faith? Well, sort of, yes, or oh, yes. So this person has a, a strong faith and so forth. No. The act of faith is, is, is a contemplation. In, in another place, you will say faith, which is the act of faith, gives us God. Contemplation procures God, allows us to receive God. It's like a mouth that opens and then you drink the water. There is constantly water available. But if you open your mouth, which is the act of faith, water falls in it. You see? So the loving, the uh, noticia amorosa, the knowledge, which is loving, full of love, uh, is faith <laughs> unexpected unexpected and this is contemplation you see synonymous this dark and loving knowledge which is faith serves i added here as means to divine union in this life even as in the next life the light of glory serves as an intermediary to the clear vision of God. A very common observation of uh, Father Louis Guillet, a specialist of St. John of the Cross, Carmelite, French Carmelite, who died in 1992. He always observed when St. John of the Cross talks about contemplation, he first looks at what is happening in heaven. So his point of reference his reference is, let us see first what is happening in heaven, then what you can deduce what can happen or what is happening on earth. So you see here there is the, you have always this sort of parallel between what is happening in heaven and what is happening uh, and or could happen or should happen or, or in, uh, we are invited to share uh, in uh, on earth. So in heaven, we have the light of glory, which is the intermediary to clear vision of God. Lumen Gloriae. This is classic amongst scholastic theology. 
how do we see with the lumen glory this is in heaven now how is our life here on earth he says what takes the place of lumen glory is what is faith it's this loving knowledge to a certain extent what is the difference between heaven and earth then god is available it's, in, it's when you think about it it's incredible what he's offering us he's not saying this is for one or two persons who are special in the eyes of god and the rest will stay in darkness for the rest of their life darkness you mean uh, by what by, by you know you, you see what i mean by that hmm? no he says you have the life in heaven occurring right now when uh, we attend mass no we talk about what is the liturgy hmm? occurring uh, we join our voices with the hymn of glory sang by the angels and the saints so heaven opens it is already happening how does it happen how they can they see each other with the light of glory now we are on earth are we deprived from this direct contact with god saint john of the cross says no you have faith but not any faith what he understands by faith which is this loving knowledge communicated to god god is there god is not depriving us from this of course he's not promising us to have a light that falls in the conscious mind which then allows us to see all this or that no he says in the spirit it falls and it is given and it is sort of like a parallel between what is happening um in uh, uh, with what is happening um in in heaven you see so remember always john saint john of the cross doesn't separate what is happening in heaven from what is happening on earth on the contrary he sees a sort of a, like a hidden uh, uh reality available slightly differently to us but still available uh, when you go to uh, and uh, for adoration for an hour on adoration in, in, in your parish or or in your uh, community uh, you are in front of the blessed sacrament well you are a little bit doing the same as all the saints and angels contemplating god all the time you are contemplating or accessing god this loving knowledge through faith they are accessing jesus through lumen gloria which is the light of glory but it is the same you see so remember always to uh, understand theologically what is heaven in order to understand what is given to us here on earth let us then now treat yes please go ahead um sorry hi hi and then the, so i'm trying to like understand what the um what the effects would be the same in heaven as here or because you see with the lumen gloria the effects are differently or is it like uh, god remember always and i'm i'm here trying to voice his opinion not mine mm -hmm. knowing a little bit what he says in other places on um, living flame and so forth he says god is always there there or here he is always present he always wants to communicate himself to us mm -hmm. what is stopping god from communicating himself to us opening ourselves mm -hmm. okay admit let us admit accept that the person is constantly open and doing his or her utmost uh, effort to uh, offer himself or himself to god and and so forth now what will then stop god from communicating himself at least to the spirit nothing nothing no but as i said earlier on he does what is needed by the person he says the holy spirit 
is the one who works. The laborer, the obrero. He is the one who works. Now, he is facing a person who needs to be purified. Will he unite this person? He can't. He needs first to purify. Mm -hmm. So, what is uh, the first need has to be accomplished first. It is the same spirit which purif purifies, who purifies, who uh, illumine, illumines yeah. or ornates uh, the human being with uh, virtues and, and, and strengthens the person and so forth. And he's the same one who unites the person to him. And he's the per same person who, uh, he's the same who will um, teach the person how to love God and to love uh, the neighbor. And he's the person who will unite this person later on uh, the, the Holy Spirit uh, unite this person to uh, the sinners. Uh, think of uh, the Lord on, on the cross and so forth. Who does all this is one person, mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit. So nobody stops God from acting. But to a certain extent, I would say that we are the ones who stop God in the sense that if I need purification, he cannot quench his thirst by giving himself to me. He will have to wait. Same applies to me. Why? Because I'm not ready yet. Mm -hmm. I need to be purified in order to be able to receive him. You see? I'm trying to convey his thoughts. And I, of course, personally, I do agree with what he says. Who am I not to agree? But I agree. But I'm just trying to convey his thoughts. Uh, because maybe some people will think that these are my thoughts. These are not my thoughts. This is St. John of the Cross. And I can show where to find what he says. Okay? So... Uh, if you read, uh, yeah, Living Flame of Love, but also chapter 10 in book two of uh, uh, Dark Knight. Dark Knight, book two, chapter 10, it's all fire. It's all fire. But it's fire of purification. So it's good from time to time to remember that even if the purification is very hard and very harsh, um, it's a loving knowledge it's a loving work of the holy spirit uh, to detach us from everything that is not god uh, but it's the same spirit who later on will then uh, inflame the spirit and um, uh, teach the, the spirit to love god uh, with these uh, uh, almost inaudible uh, acts of uh, flaming or flares or or sparkles okay so yeah no, te technically, if we are making ourselves available, he's working, but he's not working like he would be working in a purified person. Uh, if we need to be purified, he will rather work differently. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So back to the text. Thank you for, for your question. Uh, Back to the, the text. So, uh, uh, yeah, hi, Rebecca. <clears throat> um, yeah, it was here. You see, we stopped here. So, let us then now treat of the visions of corporeal substances received spiritually. So these were incorporeal. Now let us talk about the corporeal ones uh, in the soul, which come after the manner of bodily visions. For for just as the eyes see bodily visions by means of natural light, so even so does the soul through the mind by means of supernaturally derived hmm, derived light as we have said uh, through the as we have said see those same natural things inwardly together with others as god wills the difference between the two kind of vision is only in the mode and manner of them for spiritual and intellectual visions are much clearer and more subtle than 
which pertain uh, to the body. Why? Because the body is 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 um, is a lower category, if you want. Uh, for when God is pleased to grant this favor to the soul, he communicates to it this that supernatural light whereof we speak, wherein the soul sees the things that God wills it to see easily and most clearly, whether they be of heaven or of earth, and the absence or presence of them is no hindrance to the vision. And it is at times as though a door were opened before it into a great brightness, through which the soul sees a light after the manner of a lightning flash, which on a dark night reveals things suddenly and causes them to be clearly and distinctly seen, and then leaves them in darkness although the forms and figures of them remain in the fancy, the fancy, the, the imagination. This comes to pass much more perfectly in the soul, because those things that the spirit has seen in that light remain impressed upon it. You see, the grace remain impressed. When God gives such vision, such vision, it remains impressed upon the person inside. It's like written inside of the very fabric of the, the soul and the spirit in such a way that whensoever it observes them, it sees them in itself. See, when Our Lady, uh, the Gospel of, of St. Luke talks about Our Lady who kept everything in her heart and sort of came back to them, rev revising them, if you want, looking back to them and meditating upon them. The graces are written inside of her. She doesn't need to, to remember like we have to remember. She just needs to look inwardly and she finds the different graces that she received. She sees in, uh, them in uh, itself as it saw them before. You see, so as if the 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 grace kept its power or its strength or its intensity in the soul you just need to look at it then it's still alive and operating and communicating its power this is why our lady would go back and still find energy from them find light and love uh, in them you see because they are alive in her the grace is alive in us such graces especially even as in a mirror the forms that are even as in a mirror the forms that are in it are seen whensoever a man looks in it and in such a way that those forms of the things that that those forms of the things that he has seen are never wholly removed from his soul although in course of time they become somewhat somewhat remote the effect which these visions produce in the soul is that of quiet. Uh, these are um, ways of discernment, if you want. Of quiet, illumination, joy like that of glory, sweetness, purity, and love, humility, humility. It's very important here, humility. Any grace that God gives us, if it is a true grace, it, and it generates in us humility. And inclination or elevation of the spirit in God. Sometimes more so, at other times less. More, sometimes more, sometimes less. With sometimes more of one thing, at other times more of another. A thing of these the things mentioned, quiet, illumination, joy, etc. According to the spirit wherein they are uh, received and according as God wills. The devil likewise can produce these visions by means of a certain natural light. Whereby he brings, these, uh, he brings things clearly before the mind through spiritual suggestion. Whether they be present or absent. You see the, the devil can sometimes interfere here and sort of. Uh, muddle things and trick us. There is that passage in St. Matthew which says of the devil and Christ 
uh, he showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. You remember in the temptations of the Lord, at a certain point, the devil shows him all the kingdoms. But how did he do that? Concerning this, certain doctors, doctors of the church, say that he did it by spiritual suggestion. For it was not possible to make him see so much with the bodily eyes. Obviously, with your eyes, you can't see the kingdom, all the kingdoms. So it's more, uh, it's not just the body, it's not the eyes of the body, it's the eyes of the soul. As all the kingdom of the world and the glory of them. <clears throat> so he, he didn't show him using the body. But there is much difference between these visions that are caused by the devil and those that are of God. For the effects, the effects produced in the soul by the devil's vision are not like those produced in good, by good visions. The former produce aridity of spirit. The devil creates aridity of spirit. Be careful, please. Don't say any any at any moment where you have aridity of spirit. That this means that the devil is around. No. Uh, let us just. We are talking about graces, uh, fake or true graces, not a state. Okay, so the former produce uh, aridity of spirit doesn't mean that when I, I repeat again, it doesn't mean that when I find an aridity of spirit uh, or a bit of uh, um, uh, arid or dry moment in my spiritual life that the devil is there. No, he's talking about something else. As to communion with God, <clears throat> the former produces aridity of spirit as to communion with God and and an inclination to esteem oneself highly. You see, it's a degree, it's, it's, it's important for the devil to inflate our ego. This is how he's attracting us. Hmm? Otherwise you wouldn't be attracted. No, if you're not important, you wouldn't be attracted usually. Hmm? <clears throat> so, uh, and it is subtle, it's not obvious. Hmm? So um, an inclination to esteem one's, oneself highly and to receive and set store by the visions aforesaid. And to receive and set store by the visions aforesaid. And in no wise do they produce the gentleness of humility. Beautiful. Blandura de humildad. The gentleness of humility and love of God. God is humble. God is humility and love. You see? So... Of course, if God then communicates himself, God who is humble, communicates himself to me, like, uh, uh, hopefully then and it's, he, he, he makes me more humble, you see. Neither do the forms of such visions remain impressed upon the soul. Neither do the forms of such visions <clears throat> remain impressed upon the soul. We said that the graces given by God, they remain impressed in us. But when it comes from the devil, they don't remain impressed in us with the sweetness and brightness of the others. Nor do they last. You see, the others, they last. You look inside, you, fi you find, you remember, because it's written, it's like impressed in you. But are quickly effaced, effaced uh, <clears throat> from the soul. Effaced like delete, no? Uh, rub, rubbed uh, off. Save when the soul greatly esteems them. Of course, if the person esteems them greatly, well, then well, we are in trouble here. In which case, this high esteem itself causes it to recall them naturally, but with great aridity of spirit. So it's just a, a personal exercise. It's not something alive in us. And without producing that effect of love and humility, which is produced by good visions when the soul recalls them. I think it's better we stop here. So unfortunately, I'm so sorry to cut just in the middle of uh, a reasoning, uh, but otherwise it will be much more than uh, one hour. So uh, as you see, we learn a lot uh, from uh, St. John of the Cross. Constantly we find pearls here and there. So uh, let us continue next time and see what will happen. So uh, forgive me if we uh, stop here. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Thank you, and until next time.